Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Mod Showcase series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode, I'm going to highlight the LazTech SpaceX pack, and also the Exploration pack that is sort of an add-on to it. The SpaceX pack comes in three versions, HD, Standard, and Light. And I'm using the HD version because I've got nothing else installed. Uh, it doesn't have any other requirements except MechGeb. I'm just using MechGeb for testing purposes. So um, let's just go through the parts, actually. Uh, this is the SpaceX uh, Dragon 2 capsule. So this one can carry passengers up to a potential space station. Uh, looks very good. Let's see its relative size compared to that pod. And it's basically the same size as this pod. A little bit bigger. Which is interesting because it carries quite a lot of people. It carries a crew capacity of 7. Mass of 5 tons. Compared to mass of 4 tons, but only a crew capacity of 3 for the, for the command, regular command pod. So, don't know too much about that. Um, I'm gonna quickly just slap a mech jab on for, uh, for informational purposes, but, uh, remote flight control system, uh, formed as a heat shield, the Sherpa secondary payload, I guess, uh, well, no, I, I won't bring everything out. Okay, so Dragon Mod propellant tank, okay, Falcon main tank, big, okay, and then the upper stage tank, also quite big. The Merlin 1D cluster engines. Now there, there have been other uh, models for the Merlin engines and I tend to use those. I have built a replica Falcon, uh, not to this detail of course, the right size but not the right uh, look if you will. And the, I've used the this more, well these engines look very Kerbal though, very purple blue. Anyway, but uh, yeah, those are the engines. And this is the vacuum engine. Uh, the vacuum engine actually uh, is, the engine itself, the core is the same size as the core of this, the combustion chamber if you will. It's just that with upper stage engines, uh, to get the ISP that they do, they have the more substantial nozzles. Okay, pusher separation motors. There. I don't know why they're shaped like this, but okay. The Sherpa RCS tanks, the engine nacelles for for the pod, and various well, and then that's it for the engine stuff. No new control parts. Those are bent, built in, I think, mostly. And then uh, uh, adapter decoupler, interstage fairing, you know the usual stuff, and not too much of that either. Okay, just the inner stage stuff. Dragon nose cone. So there you go. And then they don't, they don't really go here, but uh, parachute stuff. Now this is interesting. This is a retractable retractable nose cone intake. I don't think SpaceX has such a thing planned. Pretty sure not, but uh, if you ever want to go to Lathe, there, there, there you go. You might want one of those. Um, ah, the main fairing. If you want to actually put payload instead of this pod onto the top of the Falcon 9, that's your payload fairing right there. Heat shield, heavy nose cone, and that's it. Dragon 2 Parachute, docking, docking Port, what does Docking Port look like? Ah, the tank's in the way. Hmm, looks more like a decoupler ring than a docking port. Yeah, well, there's a the door, I guess we can do that. Okay, and of course, uh, aside from ladders and a trunk, the all-important first-stage lander legs. We know we all wanted these, and you can see... Uh, no, that's not what I want. Ooh, air... Oh, these... Hold on. These little nacelles can do 
switch between air breathing and rocket mode, I'm pretty sure Dragon uh, SpaceX has not planned any such thing. I guess that's part of the exploration pack that uh, expands on the on the abilities of the original uh, Dragon uh, and Falcon 9, for that matter. So anyway, there's the lander legs. Very nice. That's that's very good. So we've got lander legs like that, and we also have upper stage landing gear, like so. There's also a habitat landing leg, and this is the habitat. So there's a habitat module, and I assume that opens up, but it won't do it in here. There's no tweakable for that. No new science, and that's it. Now, instead of trying to put all this together myself, let me try and open up one of the previously... Well, let, let's start with the Falcon 9 uh, version 1.1, and let's see how it looks. Okay, here we are, and this is the most advanced rocket that SpaceX has currently got in service. If it's payload, so we've got a payload bay. Let, let's load it up with a, with a payload that the Falcon 9 would normally bring up. Uh, I think 9 tons worth of payload is about right. So that, that would be a fairly reasonable load for the Falcon 9. Okay, I have to figure out how to... For some reason they're oriented the wrong way now. Okay. No. Yes. Okay, so that's a normal payload for the real Falcon 9 in terms of size. Uh, hmm. No longer sure where the staging for the shroud goes. The shroud goes after the second stage for the Falcon 9. Let's actually have a realistic liftoff. So, okay, so can this get, well, yeah, I mean, can this get this into orbit properly? I'm sure it will. The question is, what kind of Delta V do we have on this rocket? Let's see. Whoa, that's not right. Um, that is highly irregular. For stop KSP? That's not good. Um, okay, so here's the problem I'm having. Uh, what this means right now is that this can get into orbit with the SpaceX's standard payload. Uh, I mean, SpaceX Falcon 9 could carry maybe 10 tons, 11 tons. But uh, that's not like let, let, let's overload it even. Let's say we uh, give it uh, 13.5 tons, which is way over what the real Falcon 9 can carry. And really, this can still make it into orbit on its first stage. And that's not so. This isn't scaled right. Also, its thrust, its base thrust is way too high. 6.1 and uh, 2.16 would be too much for the Falcon 9, I think. And why the Falcon? Uh, yeah, that's that's a lot. So I'm I'm so yeah I'm a little bit disappointed right now because uh, this is not going to be a very good simulation of the capabilities of the Falcon 9. Um, but I mean we can. I wonder if there are any tweaks to the craft file to make this more legit. Anyway, let's take this... Well... There's no point putting a payload up. Let's let's see uh, Let's see the Dragon capsule and see if we can put some Kerbals up. Um, well, before I do that, let's take a look at the Falcon Heavy. So here we go, Falcon Heavy and... In terms of looks, it looks great, of course, uh, spot on and everything. But about capabilities, let's see. Falcon Heavy should probably not be able to bring too much more than uh, 
45 tons. I don't even know if I can get that into the fairing. No, I can't. Um, perhaps... No, that'll be too big too. Let's say... Let's just put 36 tons for now. So that's... That's a light payload for Falcon Heavy. Uh, I'll slap on Mech Jeb. Yeah, this is still quite a lot. Quite a lot. Uh, after the booster separates, the, this main tank will still have more than half of, I mean, more than half of its Delta V left over once we get into orbit. And that's definitely not supposed to happen. Okay, uh, let's see the crude version. Now, there are adjustments made to these rockets for real solar system. And so you and so if you want to fly above the real earth and all that then those uh, that adjusted rocket will probably have the correct stats. I don't know, I haven't checked that yet. But so the configuration file for real solar system, hopefully that rocket has real stats uh, as opposed to this one which uh, if you think that uh, what you do with these rockets SpaceX could do in real life, that would be wrong. Uh, so these are overpowered for their purpose and this is actually flat-out dangerous uh, there's no reason why because we see the max uh, thrust weight ratio here is uh, produces a g-force of 7 that is a lot of thrust on launch this thing is going to get up there uh, with lightning speed and that's not actually safe well, uh, let, let's just take a look. Let's just uh, stop griping and start launching. Okay, let me just get this underway. Uh, oh, uh, well, I guess we could do IVA for a sec. Oh, Jeb seems to be seated a little bit lower than everybody else. This, they're really packed into this can, aren't they? Look at them. Uh, let's switch views. Okay, so this is... Everything looks nominal, as you can see. I doubt that ever changes, but that's fine. We've got standard instrumentation here. And then you can take a back seat, just in case you want to be a back seat driver here. Yep. So, uh, the interior is the interior. Very good. Um, but yeah, let's get going. SAS on, throttle up, and I'm not going to restage this. Let's just launch. Oh my god. Look at how quickly that thing accelerates. Well, I know. I mean, uh, in stock KSB, you'd wait a while to do your gravity turn, but the way we were accelerating, I don't need to wait. Uh, I can start doing my gravi gravity turn now. If we try to accelerate like this uh, with the realism overhaul mods, this thing would break apart very very soon. It'll definitely heat up before we get too far. And they would be having bad G-forces because uh, Fermi's base uh, thins out the atmosphere at certain points and that would mean even higher G-forces than we're currently experiencing. Okay, I haven't put it into orbit, but uh, you can see the result. I probably could have if I had flattened out. Um, so let's get this into a very high orbit and uh, use the first stage for that. Uh, so I haven't changed the staging. Let's see what the staging looks like uh, on this craft by default. Okay, that separates. What, what happens here? So after you separate the first stage, Oh, those go off. Oh, uh, those are emergency parachutes for the... Okay, I see. Uh, oh, those are covering the parachutes. Right, right. Okay, and then... Okay, but we don't need that yet. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, well, getting anything... Well, heck. We're here. Um, 
seems like there's no particular reason not to do this. Considering we've got the Delta V for it. I guess maybe it's because I'm using the exploration pack. i uh, tell you what, I'll I'll jump out after we uh, boost it to the moon and do a flyby. I'll uh, jump out and see uh, what would happen if I didn't have the exploration pack installed. Just so you get an idea about that. So far, uh, taking it to this point, we I, I, my natural comparison is to compare it with the with the Apollo mod from OLDD, and that mod was had a little bit more delta v than necessary uh, because we could potentially get into orbit with just the first two stages of the Saturn V instead of burning part of the third stage. Though generally, a small burn of the third stage was necessary, but it felt about right. Um, this. I mean, there, uh, you know, I got off the launch pad uh, a little bit more realistically. This one got off the launch pad like it was an ICBM carrying no human payload. Uh, so that's a little bit worrisome. Or Kerbal payload for that matter. But maybe maybe uh, the exploration pack put some tweaks into certain things. I don't know. I'll check that out after we uh, do our moon flyby here. Now, of course, you saw the lander legs and everything, and this has rockets of certain kinds. So potentially, you could do more than just a flyby of the moon. Oh, Dragon Solar Array. Well, let's take a look at what that looks like. So that's what they were covering. I thought they were covering parachutes, but it's Solar Array. A uh, sort of Soyuz-like thing going on here. I hope this, uh, this has one parachute somewhere. Can't quite see where. I mean, in terms of detail, of course, the solar panels are brilliant, the spacecraft itself is okay, going too far. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot to recommend it in terms of aesthetics. And that's why I decided to take a look at it in the first place. If you haven't noticed already, I tend to pick mods that look good because this is a video and obviously it uh, doesn't make any sense to feature a mod that does subtle tweaks in a video unless you can do so in some sort of visually obvious way. So now we've got we've boosted to the moon how much uh, how much shelter V do we have left? Wow. Really? Um, 2,878? And this isn't with the heavy, this is just the normal one. 2,878? Uh, so this is really configured to go everywhere. I mean, let me just... Let's say we boosted out to an orbit that's the equivalent of ELU. How much would that cost me? Obviously, this isn't the right time to boost to ELU, but... Oh, uh, that's the wrong way. Okay, well, uh, then MOHO, since we're sort of in the direction to boost to MOHO anyway. You wouldn't really be able to slow down for MOHO, but you can see you can... Could, uh... Let's, let's match orbits with it. Well, you could uh, have a tangency. What you wouldn't be able to do is this part. Yeah. Couldn't match speeds with Moho. But, uh, yeah, it will get you quite a long way there.
Hmm. So, I was sort of looking for a sort of accurate scale down of the Falcon 9 and Falcon 9 Heavy. I thought that was what this was going to be, but apparently it's not. That's not what this is. But uh, let me uh, again try to take off the exploration pack and see if it's the, actually the exploration pack that tweaked something or another. And that's why I'm getting such significant results here. So let's uh, get into orbit around the moon. Oh, night lighting here. We'll pop into IVA for a sec once we get this done. Okay, let's take a look at IVA. Very blue in here. Guy's very excited. Personally, not too sure this is the best way to come up in a space. Very cramped feeling, but okay. Well, let's return back to Kerbin. So that's a trick, right? Because after all, rescaling something like the Falcon 9 to Kerbin is not a trivial matter. And it's not a linear matter either. It's not something you can go, okay, well, Kerbin is 10 times smaller, so I'll just make everything 10 times smaller. No, that's not right. Um, actually, on a matter of scale, this craft in diameter is a bit less than the orange tanks, you know, the 2.5 meter tanks. It's a little less than 2.5 meters, probably around 2 meters. Um, the real Falcon 9 is 3.71 meters in diameter. So uh, the real Falcon 9 will be about the same size as the 3.75 meter tanks that we now have in Kerbal Space Program. So clearly uh, it's not meant to be linear. Obviously you wouldn't just make the diameter or even the mass 10 times smaller. That's not right. The amount of delta V you need to uh, get to orbit around Kerbin is around two and a quarter times less than the delta V required to get into orbit around Earth. So scaling the delta V you need to scale it like that. Now how you scale the craft uh, given that information is a tricky business. And will actually depend on the craft itself. Obviously, uh, physics in regular KSP is not quite the same as in realism overhaul in terms of the atmosphere and stuff like that. Do we have lights on here? Oh, there we go. Okay. So the soft blue glow. I mean, if you want to do something epic, I mean, this this can still this can still give you your Kerbal fun if if you're. Uh, the type that wants to conduct missions rather than building their own craft necessarily. This is uh, this might be a thing for you. You could uh, launch space station with the payload shrouds. You can pretty much do everything you want with this uh, with the Falcon 9 as it is here and the Falcon Heavy. So so yeah there is that. For the casual player who doesn't have a lot of free time for instance this might be a might be a boon. And of course, better on that than the Apollo 
mod because that one practically requires a manual to understand. Especially if you're not familiar with the Apollo missions. This, the uh, SpaceX, this one will work just fine, pretty much. I mean, as long as you have a minor amount of Kerbal knowledge. You could probably get this underway very quickly. I mean, if you wanted to show Kerbal Space Program to a kid and instead of having them build their own rockets, well, I really would recommend you let them build their own rockets and fail miserably and they'll have fun with that. But uh, if for some reason uh, you wanted to just let them fire off a rocket, I think this would be a good one to give them. Certainly the visual appeal will be there. And that's that's always good. Okay, well, I think we're configured for re-entry. I don't know too much about the staging on this, though. I am just trying it out. But I'm pretty sure we can dump this upper stage now. It wasn't even supposed to come with us to the moon. I mean, it's just supposed... Technically, the upper stage is only supposed to get help get the capsule into orbit. So... Off it goes. It's got a lot of infrastructure on it. Now, what's this got? This is just a service module. just got the electric charge and the uh, solar panels. This must pack a lot of stuff in, this Dragon 2 capsule. Lower gear, blue lights off, cabin lights off, outer lights off, wow. Docking light, disable RCS ports. Hmm. Yep, lots of stuff. Now it's got its own rocket. Oh, it's a mod propellant driven thing. Okay, good. That makes sense anyway. RCS ISP. Well, let's just give it a... No, I wasn't able to see enough from that. Okay. Well, we'll find out once we reach periapsis. I don't think we need the solar panels out anymore. Okay, so we should be dumping this module now. Mm -hmm. Can we dump this? Okay, there we go. Alright, service module is away. Let me just try and see. Okay, specific impulse 320 for these twin Draco. Uh, there's an RCS ISV here, but that's different, I guess. 260. Yeah, pretty standard for KSP. Bit overpowered for basic purposes, but not a big deal. 320 for these. I guess that's alright. Oh, darn. Here we go. Boink. Okay. Just checking out what the parachute looks like at this point. Hmm. Let me see what kind of thrust these twin Dracos have. Wow. 90 kilonewtons each? Is that really necessary? That's a lot of thrust. Again, this this vehicle has had a lot of thrust all the way through. I mean, if it's really, I, I don't know, maybe, yeah, I guess it is 90 kilonewtons each. Which means that this thing can accelerate this pod, which is 5 tons, at 7 G's. 
which probably isn't necessary in space. Very strange. Well, with this kind of power, if you can't manage to get the seven Kerbals out to space and back home safely, what can I say? Wow, the reaction control is pretty strong to be able to hold it. Anyway, let's do parachute. Um, is the parachute really only supposed to be on one side like that? Well, that's not great. Let's take SAS off. I really don't need that. I wonder why it's only on the side like that. Do we have landing gear on this? Yes, we do. Just a tiny little bit. But with this strong SAS, maybe I can help things out here. Okay, parachutes open. We're still descending a bit fast. I guess that's what these are for. They do burn fuel quickly. You can see I'm only using a tiny bit of energy, but uh, I can easily surpass 1G. Okay, so they are back home, sort of. And yeah, all right, uh, let's just recover the vessel. Okay, so I uninstalled the exploration pack just to see what it gives me. And, well, let's just open the craft files. Let's see which craft files we have now. Well, we still have the Dragon 2, the Falcon 1.1, and the Falcon Heavy. And if we take a look at the Dragon 2... Still the same stats, so we're not talking about the exploration pack editing these to make them more suitable for greater ranges. It's really coming uh, a little bit overpowered here, but that's fine. I mean, uh, so this is clearly a pack for a casual gamer uh, and not for somebody. I mean, the the reason I'm getting hung up on this is because it's got SpaceX. It's got it looks like a Falcon 9. It just doesn't act like a Falcon 9, and so that's my main problem here. We could, what we could do is we could cut about half the fuel and uh, limit the thrust. One annoyance though, and really limit, the th oh, yeah, uh, oh okay, it doesn't look like it has symmetry on. So I have to limit the thrust on every single one of these. Let's try and get this to a workable situation here where it's really meant for Kerbin rather than some other place. Uh, so I'm going to put it to 50. Uh, I can actually get 50 here for some reason. Never could. So I'm getting it to 50.5. And then we'll see what we can do. Uh, the mod is huge, 
It takes about a gig of actual space. Not as much of an impact on RAM though, I've noticed. Uh, so you could probably fit quite a lot of, well, uh, some substantial mods in alongside it. So even though it takes up a lot of physical space and a lot of load time, uh, it doesn't uh, kill the RAM necessarily. Now if I don't have all of these done properly, I am going to have a disaster on my hands. So let's keep that looking right. But it is surprising how big it is. Uh, these textures must be crazy. So, alright. Um, max thrust weight ratio for a crewed mission should be uh, at most 4. So let's go for that. Uh, let's... Maybe... The, uh, now it'll lift off with quite a lot of gusto, but it won't won't get us to space. Now the upper stage engine. Now the upper stage engine is a bit over, but it's it's okay. I guess we'll go with that. Let's just not have as much fuel in. Uh, as we lighten that up, this also needs to be. Uh, well, actually, this needs a little bit more, doesn't it? Okay. Technically speaking, the upper stage burns for much longer than the lower stage with the Falcon 9. Uh, but that's for Earth. That's one of the things you can't just scale linearly with, uh, with any rocket between Earth and Kerbin. Whereas Earth, you can have the second stage be much uh, longer lasting than the first stage, and that's uh, to great benefit, that's what you want to do. That's not true with Kerbin. You have to have the second stage be relatively short uh, in order to get into orbit properly with Kerbin. Um, looks like we just need less thrust. Let's go to 40% on this stuff. Tempted to just take these off. Oh, well, this. Okay, now this one hits the forty percent, but was giving me trouble with thirty-nine point five. Interesting. Yeah, really, this should have all been symmetrized. But I guess maybe the Falk 9's engine out capability. You want them separated, potentially. I don't know why, but... Okay, hopefully I've got all of them. This is really an experiment I should be doing unmanned rather than manned. I wonder if there's an abort configured. Is there an abort configured? Hmm, no. There's no abort with this craft file. So this craft file came with the mod, by the way, just in case that wasn't clear. Okay, and let me tone down the inner stage, uh, the, the, this upper stage rocket. Okay, that's... Oh, I, I didn't notice that they have landing gear for the second stage too. That's optimistic. Well, let's just put it to where the others were. So I'm gonna claim that the most you really need is so. Oh. Some reason the stuff was rotated off. Hmm. Anyway, uh, that the most you need is actually about. Even now, it's got more delta v than it needs, but 30, 39.5 percent of the thrust and much less in the fuel tanks. 
Okay, let's try this out. Let's try this out and see if this uh, feels a little bit more like the, the capsule I think it should. Oh, um, these were pretty heavy thrusts too, but I'll leave them as is for now. Okay, so here we are with a uh, slightly less fueled, well, not slightly less fueled, uh, drastically less fueled Falcon 9. Uh, SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. Still got plenty of giddy up and go here. But this time it feels a little bit less crazy. Okay. Okay, looking good so far. Much more gentle ascent. Much easier to control the craft. Feels a little bit better at this uh, at this rate. Now it depends on what height you want to get to of course, but we've sure got uh, the tank capacity if you want to fill around with that. With a uh, full payload, with the 10 ton payload that a Falcon 9 would carry, probably you'll want a little bit more thrust and a little bit more fuel than I've put in this version. So the long and short of it is, all my complaints aside, you can easily adjust this craft to make sure it has the right feel for you. And so it's not uh, saying it's all that stuff about it being overpowered isn't an excuse not to use it. it. Just means you have to tweak it a little bit to suit your particular needs. And we're just coasting to apoapsis at this point, and I'll do a burn at apoapsis to circularize. Uh, let's get our lights on. Lights aren't overwhelming. I guess that's all right. So there we are in orbit, a uh, good orbit with a uh, fraction of the fuel. We are not going to get to the moon this time, but this really shouldn't. Uh, remember that the Dragon Capsule itself has plenty of Delta V in order to rendezvous with the station if you need to. And of course that's what it's meant for. So you can get these guys up to a station. Actually this thing has enough Delta V to not just get to a uh, Kerbin station, but probably something... Well, I mean, could, could it... Uh, actually, let's let's try this out. No, it probably couldn't transfer to the moon. Um, no, it's only got 630. Only got 635 with uh, thrust to weight ratio of four to begin with. 
Uh, I was, so I was wrong. I, I thought it was uh, Delta. Uh, it had a max G of seven, but uh, actually it only has a max G of five. That's surprising. Oh, maybe it's got the service module added in. I'm not gonna bring these guys back down this time. We already saw how that works. But let's decouple and see if my math was any good. Okay, so let's decouple the trunk. Ah, without the trunk I can't. So, right. I don't know what the mass of the trunk is, but I think my math was probably right that uh, that it was 7 G's without the trunk. Alright, anyway, so there you have it. If you want to bring 7 kerbals up somewhere, you can hardly find a more efficient system than this one. And quicker. I mean, it doesn't get any faster than this, I think. So, yep. Interesting mod. Interesting mod. And actually, what I should do is see how it feels in the Realism Overhaul. But that's, that's a story for a different day. I think visually it's very compelling. And that, that alone is quite something to say. So, yep, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.